So I tried figuring out how much damage Imbued Weapon does on Wowhead, but it appears they don't track this NPC ability, they only track Rebellious Fist and Menacing Presence. But there are three mobs who are able to cast Imbued Weapon, and it's Menders, Champions, and Wardens. At the beginning of the dungeon, you'll end up dealing with three Menders before the first boss. So at the beginning of the dungeon, as long as the Wardens are not CC'd or chain CC'd immediately, uh, they cast Imbue Weapon pretty quickly and you're able to use either Trank Shot, Spell Steal, Purge, or Dispel Magic. And you're able to then remove the magic effect. So when you end up removing the buff from the mob, it will launch the weapon in a random direction and it needs to be picked up by a melee class. I went Survival Hunter this time just to be able to test the effects out myself. But it needs to be picked up by a melee class, ranged specs will not be able to use it. And something that I just noticed while looking over the recording is the ability Carve is able to hit multiple targets and it will consume all the charges in one use, which is actually really cool. So after the first boss, you can go left or right, and you'll end up encountering four champions, or two per each side, but there's four champions total. And the four sword champion actually casts Infuse Weapon, which will hit all targets versus one target. And this is when compared to the Forsworn Mender, which does damage to one target, and this is the only one that does singular damage. So if y'all enjoy this type of content where I delve into the specifics of certain mechanics of a dungeon, then please hit the like button, potentially subscribe, or even hit the bell icon uh, to stay up to date on content as it's released. So I only managed to pick up this one infused weapon, uh, I ended up noticing a weird interaction with Ur's effect with survival hunters, and so I only managed to get one infused weapon, but in that brief moment of being able to use it, I hovered over the details window just to see how much damage it did for the entire pull. And as you will see, it did top damage. So the Forsworn Warden is the last one that you can get a beneficial buff from. It also does healing as well as damage, and it does it in an AoE effect. There's six of them in total, and it's just better to skip them, which is made easier by killing Woe first with the new Season 3 affix, and it gives you enough time to be able to make it to the third boss. So we got the relics down and Woe up, and we continue focusing the Hellion first to be able to maximize the time that we have the Woe buff. Uh, some of us ended up dragging behind because they didn't know how to make it past the stairs, but they didn't realize what the buff of Woe did. So here I just kind of wanted to give a quick example of how useful having this little buff is, and it kind of negates the entire platform before the third boss, which tends to be a big trouble area anyways. I ended up making a whole video about just how to skip this staircase, just because it was a big trouble spot in this dungeon. So using the Woe Relic definitely helps simplify this skip, and so I would definitely recommend using Woe there most every time. So the end game stats show that with the three imbued weapons, I had 15 hits, which pans out, and then the infused weapon had 25 hits, even though I only had one use of that, so infused weapons definitely better. But I'd still say both are important to utilize.